What's going on guys welcome back in today's video we're going to learn how to create and use partial functions in python so let us get right into it all right so the idea of partial functions is actually quite simple we take a function this function has multiple parameters and what we do is we take some of those parameters one or multiple of those parameters and we set them to a fixed value so to a constant we don't have to pass them to that function anymore and this creates now a new function a partial function of that initial function because some of those parameter values are now set to constants and or to constant values. So I'm going to give you here a very simple example and then we're going to go into a more complex, I don't want to call it complex actually, it's a more um, useful example, let's call it that. And we're going to start with a very simple function called greater than. So greater than is going to take two values, a, b, and we're going to return a greater than b. So this is going to return a boolean. Let me show you what this looks like. If I say greater than and then 1020, then we copy that 20, 20, 20, 10. You can see false, false, true because 10 is not greater than 20, 20 is greater than uh, not greater than 20 and 20 is greater than 10. That's the basic idea of that function. And now what I want to do is I don't want to use that function. I want to create a partial function from that function by fixing one of those values. For example, what I could do is I could say, okay, B is now no longer a parameter. It's still going to be part of the result, but B is now going to be, for example, 20. So I want to set B to 20. This is now just me thinking. So it's not how we actually do that, but I say B is 20. And what I want to have now is I want to have a function called greater than 20. And it only has one parameter a and this parameter can be like I can set this to 10, for example, and this would return uh, false, I can set this to 30. And this will return true. So we create a new function from the initial function by making one parameter constant. And how we do that, first of all, I'm going to show you a manual way to do that. And then we're going to do it with uh, a core Python module func tools that offers the functionality already the partial function. And um, the first thing that we do here is we create a function make comparator, for example, and this function takes the parameter um, as parameter the value that we want to have for either a or b. Now let's say we want to fix b, we want to say, okay, b is going to be the parameter that we're going to set to a constant and a is still going to be the parameter that we're going to use. So I'm going to call this one n anyways. And we're going to return here a lambda expression. Now for those of you who don't know what a lambda expression is, first of all, it's quite simple, I'm going to explain it briefly, but you might want to look at my video lambda expressions, or about lambda, uh, lambda expressions. Um, but the idea is quite simple, we have lambda, and then we have a parameter or multiple parameters. So for example, lambda x, and then x is the input and whatever is after the colon is the output. So what we return. And keep in mind that here, when we return a lambda expression, we don't return what's on the right side of the lambda expression. So if I say here, um, that this function returns x squared, this means this lambda x x squared is basically the same as saying uh, def, whatever, x return x squared. So that's the same thing here as this here. Um, just that this is written in a functional way. When we return that we don't return x squared, we return the function that returns x squared when we pass x to it. That's just a very important thing uh, here to keep in mind. So what we want to return here is a function that takes a and returns uh, actually, we don't need to return statement uh, and returns a being greater than b. And in this case, b is n. So we replace this one here by uh, n by a constant. So what we do is we say greater than 20 is going to be equal to make comparator 20. And then we can just print greater than 20, 10, 20 and 30. There you go. False, false, true. So this works. This is how you can do it manually. That's not the recommended way to do it. The recommended way to do it is to go ahead and say from functools import partial. 
And now what we can do here, let's get rid of all this, we're going to keep the examples. Um, what we can do here is we can say greater than 20 equals partial. And then I pass greater than here as the base function. And then I can say here b equals 20. Like that. And this will have the exact same result. Now, of course, if I say a equals 20, the name doesn't fit that function anymore, or the name of the function doesn't fit anymore. Um, actually, we have to do it like then, uh, like that. Um, because what we do here is essentially, if we pass if we if we don't say a equals or b equals, we just go in the right order. So if I just say greater than and 20, it's gonna just take 20 and put it in the first place, which is a uh, if I want to specify something else, I would have to say b equals c equals whatever. So this works also with uh, multiple values. If I have something like that, uh, I can also say uh, b equals and then c equals. So so this is not a problem. Um, but the basic idea is that we take one of those parameters or multiple of those parameters and we make them a fixed value. So if I just pass 20 now, of course, the name is not the same uh, or the name doesn't make sense. But in this case, we're, we're looking is 20 greater than the value that you pass. So in this case, it would just return true here because 20 is greater than 10. And it's not true for the other two cases. Um, and if I want to set b again, I, I say b equals. And that's it. Now I'm not sure actually, I, I've never tried this. Let's see what happens if I say a equals 10 and b equals 20. Uh, then actually, I should have a function without parameters. So let's see if I can just call it. Yeah, so in this case, we set both the parameters, I've never tried that in the past. So now we know, um, you can just take a function and partially set it. So partially take some of the parameters and set them to constant values. And then you have a new function. This is the basic idea here. Now let's move to a more um, useful and realistic example. Right, so let's get rid of all this here. And the example that we're going to use here is getting stock data. So we're going to pass a ticker and we're going to pass a time frame. And then we're going to create partial functions for certain tickers for certain time frames and so on. And for that, we're going to import date time as DT. And we're also going to import pandas data reader as web. Now, if you don't have uh, pandas data reader installed, you're going to have to open up the command line and you're going to have to type pip install pandas dash data reader like that. Uh, but this is optional just if you only if you want to follow along with the example here. And I'm going to make a very simple function here, I'm going to say def and then get stock data. And we're going to pass here uh, the ticker symbol, the start date and the end date. And I'm going to return web dot data reader. And I'm going to pass the ticker and I'm going to pass Yahoo and I'm going to pass start and I'm going to pass end. So start date and end date, basically. Um, that's the basic idea. And now this function, basically, if I want to go ahead and just say print, get stock data, and I want to get the Apple stock data. Now let's define a time frame here, let's say start is equal to DT date time. Um, actually, I think we can pass strings, right? We don't need date time. We should be able to pass strings. So let's just go ahead and say, uh, one, one, 2018. And up until one, one, 2019, like that. And we don't close this here yet. So this gives us just a basic data frame, a basic pandas data frame with the high, low, open, close volume, adjusted close and so on. Um, and we can do that for different time frames, we can do that for different um, ticker symbols. And you might want to use that function now to create a partial function where the ticker symbol is always the same. For example, I can create a function get apple data. And this function is just partial from get stock data where the ticker symbol is equal to AAPL. So I can just say, uh, actually, we don't want to do it like that. We want to do it like that AAPL. And now what I can do is I can just say print get Apple data. And I want to pass here one one 2018. 
and 1, 1, 2019. So this is going to have the exact same effect as the first function call. So we're going to get the data frame for that time frame. As you can see here, we have two times the same result. Um, and this is the basic idea of partial functions, right? I can do that now with different companies, of course. So I can do the same thing here with um, Tesla and now replace that TSLA. And I can do that. And this makes it very easy, especially if we have very complicated functions uh, with a lot of parameters, with a lot of code. We don't want to write um, the same function all over again, just with less parameters or something like that. We can just use one of those functions and uh, make it a new function, especially if we set many parameters that might make sense. Um, so what we can also do here is we can say get stock data before or let's say from 2018 uh, until now, basically. And this could be partial and then get stock data. And what we pass here is that the start date is 1-1-2018. And now I can go ahead and say print get stock data from 2018 for the company. Um, let's go FB, for example, and I want to have the end date being equal to 1 1 2020. Now I'm not sure if I can even do that or if I have to specify keyword arguments here. We're going to find out in a second. Um, but maybe this, no, it doesn't work because, yeah, I think it's because we need to say end equals, right? Isn't that the case? There you go. This is what we need to do because otherwise what happens is that we have set start to a value. Uh, and the problem is that we set it again to a value if we don't specify that we set another value here because we set the ticker and the next thing is start. So if I don't specify end equals, it will just set this again. So we if we set start to something, we need to do this as well. And then I can just do something else like um, get stock data from 2018 to 2020. And then I can say partial get stock data, and then start is equal to come on, it's equal to 1 1 2018. And is equal to 1 1 2020. Um, yeah, and then what we can do is we can say print get stock data and this function that we just created. And then we can say, I don't know, Goldman Sachs, so GS. And then we just get the data from that function for that time frame. So this is a bit more useful example than just using a greater than function or an add function or something like that. This might make sense if we have a complicated function. Again, all the functions that I showed you here in this video are one liners so that you understand the concept. But imagine a function with a 1000 lines of code, um, you can just easily create partial functions by using the partial keyword and setting parameters, you don't have to um, <clears throat> always remember to set the parameters correctly. And you don't have to create new functions, you can just do it like that. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video. And bye.